I'm Steve. I'm Tom. And this is Demagogue News with Things You Need to Know About, Episode 11, the Trump Coronavirus Task Force Briefing and the Stimulus Package. So, Tom, another day in paradise, huh? Yeah, um, a lot to uh, soak in when you're not doing much else. Yeah, you. well, you went to the – you have a brother. You have a brother that owns keys to a gym. Hey, let's not uh, let's not go snitching here. <laughs> I, I don't know which brother it is, but allegedly. So you're pretty lucky. You get a gym still. I'm still sitting here in you know my little quarantine box with everybody else. Yeah, how's the Bhagavad Gita going? Uh, so well, I finished it. Uh, very, you know, eye opening. Uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm just reading all the religious works while well, I have nothing better to do, and uh, pretty good. Give it to you after. It was, it was actually uh, uh, pretty interesting to read. Really weird, but... Oh, get on to that. My girlfriend and I are on the Book of Revelations, so... <laughs> oh, that's fun, right. Fun stuff. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, though, it isn't the end of time. Not yet, at least. Shucks. So, uh, President Trump has been having these daily press conferences, and he keeps looking more and more alive since the initial hit. No, this one, this one he actually looked... He, Every single day, it looks better. Today, he was pretty animated, but I feel like today wasn't the... Well, there's a lot of things to be happy about today, mm -hmm. you know, being that the, finally that the stimulus plan got passed for the Senate, so... Yeah, after much arguing... At, much oh, much arguing. At, uh, right now, it is Wednesday... No, Thursday. Thursday, 26th. the 26th, yes. Uh, so... <laughs> the day this, is just sort of spinning by us. So, I don't even know which it is. Yeah, right? They all blur together. Uh, at this morning, at 1 a.m., the bill passed in the Senate. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So that follows up with the press conference. Uh, Trump is looking more and more like a unifier. If if there were any tactics used by the media to um, sort of demonize him, they're actually failing miserably at this point. Americans are really approving of the way that he's dealing with the crisis. I believe it was a recent Gallup poll. He's above 50%. So he's above water when it comes to how Trump is doing to the crisis. And I think overall, he's at 49%. Yeah, that's the best numbers he's ever seen. Damn near. Yeah. But above 50%, uh, you're winning. You're they, you're playing with house money at that point. He's doing fantastic right now. And I think that it's absolutely true. He's doing everything you're supposed to be doing. You can, can't really disagree with that. Yeah. So he's deployed you know, the USS, I believe it's Mercy on the West Coast yes, and USS Comfort, Comfort on, the, on East. the East Coast to uh, L.A. and New York, respectively, to help out with their crises, although L.A. is nowhere even close to New York's numbers. Yes, New York is still running at half, half of all U.S. infections. New York has them. Uh, the United States, unfortunately, is now the front runner, number one in the world. For confirmed cases, but that being said, that's because China is no longer reporting theirs. Yeah, but, well, those numbers are, you know, tough to, you know, find out anyways. So they basically don't count anymore. But yeah, so uh, as far as truth tellers go, as far have... as truth tellers, yeah, we're number one. And New York and well, the tri state area, you know, being that is New York, New Jersey specifically, have 45,000 cases. U.S. totals are 85. So they have half. Yeah. Which is a ton. However, uh, that being said, New York rates of the rate of infection is kind of tapering off. Like it's not as rapid as it once was. As it once was, yeah, but it's still. I don't know if you'd say above the curve. Yeah, I don't know if we're at that point yet. Yeah, I don't know if we're yeah crossing that point, but uh, uh, I don't know. I may. I think it's a portion of like testing is on point, mm -hmm. and that we we can, we can true. confirm our own testing. In the United States as being. You know, as reliable as it gets that we know that maybe these are accurate numbers for all countries when it comes to specified perfect reporting. Mm -hmm. So maybe it looks really rough in New York, but is that what's um, – maybe not Seoul, but how's Berlin or the U.K. or you know Spain's doing really bad? How's Spain? You know, the accuracy of those may not be as accurate as ours. Last I checked, Spain was in fourth as far as infections. Oh yeah, Spain. Spain's. Yeah, so I say Spain. Spain's doing pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I remember Doctor Burks was saying uh, you brought up the UK. 
uh, during the press conference, she had said that the UK is not even seeing close to the number of numbers that they were supposed to. Yeah, uh, a question was given to her about deaths and should be X amount. Yeah, yeah the half UK- a million in the UK was the prediction. Yeah, UK right now, even hyper dense areas, London, you know, those big cities. It's like 20K, I think, was the actual estimate now. Uh, maybe the actual estimate for totals cause right now, real number is it's 11.5. Wow. So that's pretty good. Yeah, it is. It's good to hear. They've just barely passed South Korea. So, you know, hopefully that trend keeps on going and that uh, we're on the tail end of like the terrifying, like every day is so terrible. Ah, burn down your houses. Yeah. And going off that, Sweden has closed down next to nothing. They still have like their schools are open. Okay. So it, so that one's a weird one. I mean, I, I don't. There's a lot of places in the U.S. still where their schools are open. That's true. You like know, the less densely populated yeah. areas. Arkansas, Kansas. Yeah. Places not, not in the news aren't in the news because everything's kind of hunky-dory. Yeah. Uh, however, it's not hunky-dory in New Orleans, which right now has the high. Uh, Louisiana has the third highest number of confirmed cases in the U.S., and New Orleans right now has the highest rate of infection that we have, like, as far as growing numbers. Yeah, so they're on the wrong side of on the rise yeah they're definitely uh behind the peak of the curve yeah louisiana louisiana's not that far down but you know there's not that many people there so they're but it's very densely packed in new orleans i mean it is but it's nothing compared to like new york let's say as far as density yeah new york's one of the densest places um, in the world though yeah That's, they're an outlier in their own right like i want to say that new orleans has a population of about two hundred fifty thousand. no i'm not including suburbs or anything like that i thought it was bigger than that Mm, I was saying the know. French Quarter to be a bigger place. Uh, the French Quarter is really nice <laughs> if you haven't been. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, a few hurricanes will uh, definitely get some migration, emigration out of the city. <laughs> yeah, so uh, th- this isn't a Katrina for New Orleans by any stretch of the no, imagination. N- n- not yet, at least. <laughs> don't, don't, yeah, yeah, don't worry point. about it. I shouldn't jinx that. Uh, otherwise, uh, Mike Pence continually looks super sleep deprived and continually pulls up his 15 day slide like every single conference pence is looking pretty pale he's at the same like shade as his hair yeah and uh it, it's actually an interesting contrast is trump just putting all his work on pence because trump is you know i don't know if him and Melania are getting it on every night to keep that truck rolling but pence like you're looking you're looking like dracula bro yeah i mean he is the head of the task force yeah but Come on, bro. <laughs> You're looking rough. Fauci's looking strong. Deborah's, you know, she's got a yeah, good attitude. Dr. Brooks is looking good, but then... It is an interesting contrast to listen to to the both of them, especially during these, not you know, somber. There's nothing really excited to be about during these press conferences. Mm-hmm. How good of an orator that Pence is. He's a very good speaker. Yeah, he is, definitely. The one thing I had to remark, like, man, he's... Much better speaker than Trump. Oh yeah, for Gosh, sure. He's, he's like, hey, he's talking. He's not saying anything he's new, but it's like, oh man, you really can speak a lot better. God damn it! Why can't you take some lessons, Trump? Just, just a little. Nah, he, not he a wouldn't lot. be Trump if he didn't. Then that that changes your whole thing. But like, we've done a great job. Like an amazing. Great like you people. read a couple letters and you look up and you speak to the camera and you just read really fast and like, that's how you're supposed to like do it for public speak. I don't know. <laughs> not yeah, his style pence is still on the raise the sign 15 days i think we got seven days left or it's supposed to be april 1st so five days um i think it's april 1st was okay, when so, they so yeah. we got a business week that's okay we can deal with the business week yeah so that's not bad and then we'll reassess the situation uh trump got a lot of questions because he was giving out he'd like to see people in church on easter which is april 6th uh whether or not that's very important to him he's my favorite book is the Bible. It is the greatest book. You know, other books, n- other holy texts, not as good, not that as is, that sacred. Is that is good. No. Yeah, he's um. So he's got getting a lot of flack for that. Is it necessarily unrealistic? Um, if you compared our numbers to swine flu numbers, yes. <laughs> but uh, overall, if you are trying to like make sure that those at risk don't get. COVID-19 I don't probably know. not a good idea. So my church did virtual church. It worked out pretty well. Okay. I don't, good. It, it wasn't terrible. Mm-hmm. Now, we got a couple of mega churches here in Vegas. Uh, the one 
Central Christian Church. Yeah. Pretty honking joint. They maybe don't go there, but there's plenty of churches out there. Or ICLV, it's a big church. A lot of people go there. But, you know, we're not saying don't get your church on, mm-hmm. but just change how you church your church. Jeez, I'm just, <laughs> now that you say that, it just makes me think, like, Missy Elliott and like becomes a born again Christian. It's like get your church on. Well, hey, uh, Britney's a communist now. Wait, seriously? Oh, you didn't hear? Okay. Dude, that's news. That's news. <laughs> that's well, it's uh, it's a couple days of news, but uh, we'll get to that later. Uh, yeah, you want to go into? Let's go into the fact that people who make money off of taxpayer dollars are actually insanely bad at spending them, like insanely. Oh, yeah. Holy, it's without restraint. So the bill that passed in the Senate noted um, the House has not passed it yet. So the bill hasn't made its way onto President Trump's desk yet for him to sign off. Right. So there's a few things that are good in it, like the $500 billion to beleaguered U.S. industries, including like cruise ships. Airlines. Airlines yeah, small anything businesses. travel. Right. Yeah, small businesses is actually going to be $350 uh, billion dollars in loans, which could be forgiven. Right, depending on if you keep your payroll yeah, up to you a certain point. Yeah, you have to keep employees. Uh, three hundred, two hundred fifty billion in unemployment insurance. Which I'm curious is that is that so unemployment insurance is that going to be for next time? Because I, I would get unemployment insurance from my insurance provider just in case I become unemployed. Mm-hmm. Then they would pay me a portion of what my salary was. But what does that mean now? Does that mean that in our in this difficult in these trying times? That if the business cannot provide, then they have to lay me lay me off again. I'm pretty sure they what they're doing is they're dispersing this money to the states. The states then pump that into their unemployment programs, which gets pumped into the company, which gets pumped to you. That makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, because yeah. I believe I read that the U.S. Treasury is going to dole this out. That's supposedly in the press conference they were talking about. If the IRS has your account information, then you can get a direct deposit. But if it doesn't, it could take up to, what was it, like three or four months to get a check? Well, they've already said that, that Trump bucks checks three three weeks. Yeah. So we're going to get them in April. So mm-hmm. March is a mulligan. Yeah. You just mulligan March and figure it out because yeah, – If you're living paycheck to paycheck. Right. March it's is a rough mulligan. Day. <laughs> right. And uh, so the earliest of – these twelve hundred dollars per person between the uh, price brackets is going to be in April, uh, and it's supposedly they're going to offer out like you would make as much as you make now for the next four months without actually going to work. Which to me, I have kind of a problem with that. It's like paying people to not work when there are people in places like Walmart or Amazon, nurses, every hospital, yeah, who are working and they're. You know, they're actually working for their money, whereas... Tom, are you saying people are going to game the welfare system? That would never well, happen. I never. Huh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Senator Sanders had a really good uh, speech about that on the floor. Like, if you're making $12 an hour, and you're hitting hard times just like the rest of us, like, I don't even know what he was getting at other than give people more money, but that shouldn't be surprising at all. We're working on it, you know. We got two, It was $1.5, now it's $2 trillion. Yeah. It, it, money ain't free. No, it, it isn't. Money, money printer go burr. That's not how it works. <laughs> before that was 1.2. Before that was like 0.9 trillion. The number just keeps going just up. Just keep adding rent and zeros. Doesn't matter. Money printer go burr. Yeah, just to finish up the stuff that's actually useful in the bill, like $150 billion to state and local governments who I guess are being exhausted with providing care to people who Fair. have coronavirus. And then $93 million for legislators to legislate. Which is kind of weird. Legislators going to legislate. Yeah, yeah, so they they just wrote themselves, the House and the Senate, a $93 million check. So that's kind of Well, as weird. per the 29th Amendment, the Senate is allowed to adjudicate when they get pay raises. Now, which uh, I wish, uh, man, that's life. T- life is tough. Like, in these trying times, <laughs> yeah, how can these trying. senators and representatives and councilmen be able to pay their bills in these trying times? <laughs> by voting in a pay raise. Well, actually, it's not a pay raise. It's a bonus. It's a bonus. Let's, yeah. Let's make sure we get our terminology right. Even though specifically Trump uh, pulls out the idea that, that they're going to make sure that there's going to be no corporate uh, stock buybacks or executive bonus abuse like yeah. the financial crisis. 
which uh, we would all appreciate. That was a big criticism yeah. in the last couple of days. Republicans, oh, the, the Fed's just going to give it to Boeing and they can spend it however they want. They, they have some, you know, these uh, uh, conditions mm-hmm. for getting this cash. And uh, obviously, I think everybody can agree. Don't do that. Yeah. I mean, we it's already been four senators that just committed insider trading. Already. Yeah, that's uh, really scummy. And so if you're the CEO of uh, Frontier, you can't just write yourself a check and say, all right. Deuces, I'm not CEO anymore. Thanks for twelve million dollars. Yeah, so, so that's good. None of that. It's it's mainly focused towards keeping their employees, which is the idea. Yeah. Uh, however, you know, uh, in the words of Alan Greenspan, don't let a crisis go to waste. So <laughs> there's a few <laughs> things. Greenspan. One of the things that almost made it onto the bill was funding for the border wall, <laughs> which was going to be ten point five. Oh billion. man, come on, Mitch. <laughs> you could have done it, Mitch. <laughs> Mitch better have my money. <laughs> Lindsay, where were you when we needed you in a darkest hour? Oh, yeah, and I also so- forgot to say for useful uh, things, $100 billion for hospitals. But let's get to the really skeptical stuff because there is a lot in this mm-hmm. bill. This was, I think the stuff that I named off was like a little over a trillion. So there's- And I believe those are things that are already were agreed upon mm-hmm. on Sunday. They were. Because so- the first <laughs> vote was supposed to be made on Sunday before – uh, in with an agreement from Senate Republicans and Senate Democrats before a wrench was thrown into the mix and a new deal proposed by the Nancy Pelosi gang had a lot of funny things in it. Are there funny things in it, Tom? Tons. Let uh, me tell me the funny things. So these are make me laugh. I mean, I make my day. Make my day. I, mean, I laugh, but like there's tears coming down, like, like rolling down my cheeks. Tears of enjoy Be- because they're because it's American taxpayer dollars. So uh, one that was addressed in the uh, conference was twenty five million to the Kennedy Center for the like performing arts. Oh, that's part of the humanities <laughs> portions. Yeah, twenty five million because that's you know what in these trying times. <laughs> Don't forget about your local English major. Yeah, or your, your ballet. That, that's what's truly important. Theater. The theater. <laughs> the theater. We mustn't forget. Like $75 million for the National Endowment for the Arts. Like, just fucking say like million dollars. <laughs> right, right there. Um, I also Lest f- you forget, <laughs> it is the celebrities that we require the most. These actors are the glue that keep our country together. You don't need water. You don't need shelter. You need theater. Uh, we also have some other skeptical shit, like you know the Russians did that. They put tons of money into the Bolshoi, which is the most famous ballet place in Russia. Really? Back in yeah, during the the height of the Cold War, a lot of money yeah. was put into that. And we cannot stress enough. Go back and listen to episode four. <laughs> episode, four. <laughs> episode four always comes up. So hey, maybe you know because the Russians were great in the seventies and eighties. Maybe we should follow our yeah. domestic policy based on theirs <laughs> and invest in the humanities. Think about it. They kicked ass in the Olympics. <laughs> Steroids. Back, back uh, the, yeah, a project, lot of Project Icarus. <laughs> what else we got, Tom? Uh, we got some uh, – so FEMA gets $45 billion, which – Okay, well, FEMA is doing something right now. They've been dispatched, but some of it – okay, so when I dug a little bit deeper, it's $200 million for food shelter services, okay. $100 cool. million for grants to firefighters, $100 Ooh, that million. That sounds good. For enhanced sanitation to airports. That's great. I like that. And then it's like, but there's, <laughs> I didn't even cover one billion with that. I covered like ha- not even half a billion. <laughs> I don't know where the rest of this. The 43.5 billion dollars. Yeah, 44.5. Yeah. Yeah. Billion dollars. So no idea where that's going. Is there, wasn't there another portion that uh, what's going to be exactly divvied out will be uh, given to us in six months? Wasn't that a portion somewhere? Yeah. So we'll find out the other forty-four billion dollars that FEMA has a little later. Mm-hmm. Maybe FEMA's just uh, the cash cow front for the CIA. And we mean, just, exactly. Like, do we? They just maintain the black sites, all the CIA and the farm. Maybe that's a, what it yeah, all is. Like, how do we really know that these? Like, this is just this is just what they're saying, but it could be funneled through that organization to wherever they really want the money to go. Because, like, what does other than very trying times? What does FEMA do? FEMA. Like right. it makes sense to get the pay for FEMA when you need it. Yeah, definitely. Like, but like between mass casualties and incidents, what are you paying the like? Yeah, you got to keep the lights on. And you got to pay employees. Yeah, okay, but the like, employees. But there, you, you, what? You, I, I mean, all the water in Puerto Rico is wasted. Yeah. All that food was wasted in that the was warehouses. So, that was such a terrible with. scenario. So we we paid for – we, me and you, Tom, we mm-hmm. paid for a couple cans to go into those airlifts, and then they sat in some warehouse. So what the fuck does FEMA do outside of being useful? 
In trying times, nothing. No, uh, yeah, and nothing. Well, they do have a payroll. But, but they're getting $45 it. billion dollars in a couple weeks, so they're yeah. going to figure out what to do with that money, I'm sure. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, dude, people are going to be rolling in cash that's going to be increasingly inflated, like uh, hundred what $19.6 billion to the VA. Okay, the, the, well... It's a good cause. Don't get me wrong. Yes. Like our veterans do need to be taken care of, and the VA is terrible. Like, That's a problem. The VA, the criticism of the VA is the VA is a pile of dog shit. So it throwing is. more money on it isn't going to make it faster or better Supposedly, or higher quality. It's being invested into like the tech that they use, and what like to I guess they're trying to speed up the bureaucracy. Is it fourteen million or fourteen billion? Four nineteen nineteen six billion. Okay, nineteen billion. Because so, so you can build a couple more VAs with that. Yeah. Build one more in each big city. So it's not so big of a weight. And if they do do – like, if it actually got used efficiently, like, yes, I would be all for that because our veterans get treated terribly when they end service. Right. Um. So I I don't know. I'm still skeptical about that one. Yeah, but how? That's always the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we might give it to you. Here's a gazillion dollars. What the hell are you going to use it for? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, on top of that, $14 billion just for farmers. Farmers. <laughs> well, I mean, who's buying cows right now? No restaurants. I mean, I kind of am through the grocery store. Well, I, me too. I, 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 I eat a cow a week, but restaurants aren't doing nearly enough business. Yeah. I saw on Facebook, it was a, a post from a local farmer in Colorado, mm-hmm. you know, asking for people to buy direct and he got inundated with so many, uh, uh, Calls and, oh, good and for orders. Him. Way to put they, yourself out. So there. I'm like, that's fantastic. Yeah, like but I'm that. sure there's like, because this market economy requires the market. We're not mm-hmm. a command economy. We're a market nah. economy. So the market went through the roof. Went went down the hole. Well, crops have a shelf life, and they're not being sold. Yeah, they're being wasted. So I think that farmers, even though there was a big subsidy last year for farmers, again, you know, let's make sure that our food supply doesn't go anywhere. I think yeah. that's that's fair. Here's a gazillion dollars, farmers. Don't stop making food, please. Ten point five billion for the Pentagon. You know what? They've lost trillions of dollars already. That's a drop in the bucket. I don't even give a shit. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Remember nine eleven? They lost four trillion dollars. Yeah, they did. So <laughs> what? Nine, ten billion? Oh, whatever. Just keep the lights on, all right? Make sure we don't get attacked. Who cares? Nine hundred and fifty million dollars to prisons. A billion dollars to prisons. Yes. Okay. Uh, is it going to maintain this awesome? Well, first of all, prisons are doing crap anyway. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like releasing prisoners from jail all across yeah. the world. In New Jersey, what are we paying for? Who's the newest one, Stephen? New York, baby. Yeah. In New York. Uh, bum 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 Yeah, what it's a, good what a day to it commit is to be incarcerated for like a fairly well actually you could have, be a felon and still get released you can commit felonious crimes and they will give you a ticket that will require a mandatory arrest in the future uh okay <laughs> what? going to florida i'm leaving today to steal your car <laughs> Jeez. uh also, just a side note, uh, student loan payments are going to be deferred for six months, so all the way up to September 30th. Right. That, that sounds about fair. Can't be pulling extra cash and, gar- and garnishment on people's wages when no one's working. Yeah. That, you know, for a certain amount of time, no student loan payments. Sure. Makes sense. Uh, $1 billion for the Defense Purchase Act, which they've made a big deal out of. I don't even think Trump's really used the Defense Purchase Act. He specifically Act. says in this latest briefing that he's activated the Defense Procurement Act, and he's all, had to use it on two minor occasions, but every other time, and he lists big names. Yeah, Ford, uh, M- GM. M3, GM. Yeah, four, yeah, I didn't have to tell them. I asked, and they said yes. Yeah. You know, I didn't have to, you know, brute force wasn't required, so he didn't, he didn't have to enact or require any real real big business to do something they all of their own accord have stepped up so even though it's been activated i'm sure that gives the president more powers to move money and do this and do that i mean so they get a billion dollars for the next time the defense procurement act needs to be like used yeah, i guess <laughs> i don't know <laughs> do they get like receipts for this i'm just curious that would be an amazing – so Obamacare costs like $360 million for the website, right? Yeah. And you know that sounds like a crazy amount of money for a website. I'm sure there's a lot of developers that say, Psh, I can do that for like five grand. Yeah. You guys are retarded. But that's a dollar per person. Now, a dollar per person, 
for utilization of website, like, okay, it's, it is like 360 million people. I'm sure the cost that YouTube uses to make their servers and things run are probably the same. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a lot. But uh, I would love to have a website that was just like streaming down constantly, just receipts. <laughs> I, I want to just see – just – and it would be almost impossible. I want to see receipts like, oh, we spent X, Y, Z for 11 tanks and it cost this much per day to have at the military. And, it, you know, I want a nice flow chart yeah. of every single dollar. So I say, where's this money going? Oh, okay. There's, oh, oh, it costs like $80 million a day to maintain the Air Force. Okay. And, uh, oh, it costs X, y. okay, cool. I'm, I'm glad to see I know where that's going. Yeah, at least. Because these are massive numbers we're rattling off, and this isn't even a lot in the scheme of things. You know, we have been – we the U.S. government has just printed up this money to make it real. Yeah. This f- fake fiat currency we have. This, we, this has been created to supply and support the framework of our economy. Like, where is it going? I mean, if we're going to follow the uh, uh, hearkening back to the 08 financial crisis. People's pockets. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. It, it really, like, we there was no accountability. It was pretty much like throwing money at your problem. Well, I know if I do that in a strip club, uh, my problems do go away. So maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. Temporarily. Hey, do you think this is a long-term economy right now? No, not really. <laughs> What else we got, Tom? Uh, so one of the weirder ones, it was like $13.30 per like per gallon of sand sanitizer. Huh. Like that one was that was the price tag. Like I didn't make it up. I know that a lot of the alcohol companies are being re- requested to uh, divert from mm-hmm. brewing alcohol yeah. to start making hand sanitizer cuz the process really isn't that much different. Mm-hmm. Are they going to like are we going to have a petrodollar and a Santa dollar? <laughs> the price per barrel of hand sanitizer, $13 per barrel? Is that what's going to happen? That's what it's looking like right now. Hey, invest, guys. OPEC, <laughs> thing of the past. Yeah, hand sanitizer hand is sec. the new oil. Hand sec. Hand sec. Uh, $750,000 to the Office of the Inspector General. That's like $12. No one cares. Yeah. Uh, so here's like the rural there's a lot of stuff for rural development like 145.5 million in rural development well 145 million yes there's a lot of rural in this place a buck 45 ain't gonna go that far I mean, compared to some of the other stuff on here that's kind of minute right so it's something and you know we gotta make it a little new deal let's make some bridges yeah, it sounds pretty new deal like uh a lot of it went to uh, Indian reservations, and by a lot of it, like in the grand scheme of things, I don't mean a lot of it, but there's a significant, like $100 million went to food distribution programs for Indian reservations. Specific- specifically just for Indian reservations. Yeah, $453 million for the Bureau of Indian Education, uh, $1.032 billion for Indian health services. Like, I don't know Damn. who their lobbyists are, but they- They are working. Oh, they man, are working. Hustle. Damn. <laughs> Invest in your local tribal lobbyist. Yeah, for real. So what, one of the my friends I, I worked with, he's a tribal lawyer. They get home like Donkey Kong when it comes to the legal system. He, he His mother is native. That's why he's able to, and works with the local Paete tribe here in Nevada. He just does tribal law. He's, he's a full lawyer past the bar. There's enough law to be done for – Native Americans, that they're just a certain sect just for tribal law. That's pretty wild. And he works seven days a week. He is swamped Damn. with business. Damn. And I think, I believe one of his cases might be seen by the Supreme Court. That's I think we nuts. forget about Native Americans who still got sway. They are their own sovereign nation. Yeah, exactly. So you're almost like, it's almost like being a State Department lawyer because you're jockeying between For two... that uh, government. Yeah, yeah exactly. For between two sovereign states. Yeah. Man, Native Americans get it. Native Americans, yeah, they, you get uh, that Trump money. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> they certainly got this one. Uh, otherwise, the Smithsonian is getting seven and a half million dollars. I mean, eh, okay. Have you been to the Smithsonian, Steve? It's, it's pretty big. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, but, I don't. I don't think it <laughs> needs. But seven. in a crisis, you yeah, must see exactly the original Wright plane, the Hope Diamond. <laughs> Check it out. It's what's important. Check in these it out trying before times. it's gone. <laughs> before it's gone. Uh, 300 million. Have you seen the Apollo? (laughs) (laughs) 
that, that's in the um, National Aeronautics and Space Museum. And they got multiple ones. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so Social Security getting three hundred million. Probably because they're that's a sp- now. Let's look at at Social mm-hmm. Security. Yeah, how many people are on Social Security? How Taxes. many tens of millions? <laughs> Three hundred million dollars is like a hundred dollars per person. Yeah, what? And talk about being small fry stuff <laughs> in compared to the big scheme. Because first of all, no one's paying it to Social Security. Exactly. Right now. Yeah. How do you keep it running if nobody's paying for it? So is this three hundred million dollars just to cover this month? Because every single paycheck, there's a little portion that I'm never gonna get. That's going to Social. You're never Pretty gonna get much. your Social Security. Oh hell no. No God no. no. So yeah, if you're listening to this and you're under the age of like seventy, you're probably well, not. no. <laughs> no, like my mom might get it. Your parents, you know, Maybe. yeah, they might, yeah. In ten years, they'll be around. But, but for the next ten forty years, oh, wow, you're an optimist. In the next forty, eh. I would just say, well, all the boomers are dying from coronavirus. We've plenty of uh, all like what, a hundred and fourteen of them. What is the death count up it's to? It's not in the a US? lot. It's no, so low. So no, yeah, we're um, we're ready for hantavirus. If That's you're a millennial the- planning out your few, like your retirement, do get a, not get, get an IRA, get yeah. a, get a Roth, get an IRA in. For God's sake, do not include Social Security into your calculation. Yeah, they they ain't never happening. So basically, Social Security just covered itself for the month. Yeah, I mean, like every senior citizen can take like their grandkids to Chick Fil A. It's pretty much what this expense is. Well, yeah, okay. You know, in these trying times, you need a little salvation in your chicken. The Lord's chicken. <laughs> Please sponsor us. Six hundred and seventy-four million to the Department of State. And one point one five billion to foreign operations, which is weird considering we've closed off most flights, and one, like we're not really so, doing so six six and change to the State Department. Mm-hmm. The hell does the State Department need half a billion dollars and plus for? That's my question what, too. What weren't they doing last year with their budget that was signed, sealed, and delivered for whatever their budget was? That was like, oh yeah, it's fine. We can okay. make do with our budgetary needs. All right, hear me out. I think I know. Okay, I actually just, death camps. I actually just well close, but not really. All right, so just watched this documentary on like the end of days with my girlfriend before I came here. Did Michael Moore directed. Oh no, it's even better. So, <laughs> Mike Pompeo is an avowed Christian. Yes, and I think that he wants to divert this money to take out the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem and the re- Zionists. <laughs> And reconstruct the ancient Jewish temple so that the Antichrist can go there and then the second coming can happen. He's on the Revelation train. Everybody, please disregard him. The four horsemen are going to come down. The trumpets will blare across the world. The fissures, the angels with hundreds of eyes are going to come down. Um. Okay. So, anti-Zionist on this side. And... Uh, <laughs> He's bringing, <laughs> he's bringing forth the end of days. Rejoice! It's, it's way too boring. Yeah, your tax dollars are going towards this, ladies and gentlemen. Take uh, that, atheist! Huh? Yeah, suck it. Uh, okay, um, and, and then a billion dollars to foreign foreign what? What's the actual vocabulary? So one point one five billion to foreign operations. What the hell does that mean? Uh, it's pretty vague. I'm sure we're like so. In the beginning of today's uh, press conference, Trump says that he was just had a G20 meeting with a bunch of people, mm-hmm. bunch of governments. What the hell aren't we spending money on for? At like everywhere as America is the world police. Yeah, what are we doing abroad? And also, being world police costs a lot more than a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. What the hell is that billion dollars? A billion dollars is dropping the bucket compared to the the military spending. Yeah, let alone. You know, all these countries that we're, we are in, we're not supposed to be in. We're in Nigeria. Like, we're in all these places. A billion dollars is like 20 minutes of working. Yeah, it's actually – it's less than a day to operate the military because uh, the stimulus package right now is – I want to say it's probably up to about four times our military spending. Right, so maybe we can't buy the new – more F-35s yeah. you know, next year. He's going to war right now besides, like, tribes in Afghanistan because we're pulling out. I think that's China's plan. China. China wants us to hurt our economy before they invade. I read that in Tom Clancy book, and it's actually <laughs> it's very accurate. But uh, yeah, a uh, billion dollars for foreign operations. Like, yeah, that's a pretty weird one. Is that, is that just like free money to give to Italy or like the UK? Like, hey, I know it's rough. Here's like a eight hundred million dollars for some ventilators. 
but that's only 200 million left. Like that's not even a lot of money yeah. for the rest of the world. Exactly. It's a, it just seems like a drop in the bucket and it seems like a weird I don't know where this money's going. There's a lot of government offices that you never heard of that aren't shysty weird ones, but are just really dumb. <laughs> and the big thing that has affected education and a lot of our life is administration. Administration costs a crap load of money. And it sounds like this bill pays for a lot of administration. It does. Bureaucracies are expensive. I mean, I don't want to burn half my dollar when I make it. Yikes. Before I, <laughs> before I spend money on taxes. Well, yeah, as the famous saying, we pretend to work and they pretend to pay us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lenin, 2020. A, so is that like the gist of all the, the monetary items in uh, the bill? I just want to round it out with 17 point. Four billion towards housing and urban development. Oh, there you go. And two million, two million, which is kind of a weird number for justice information sharing technology. Justice for, information sharing technology. for enhanced department telework capabilities. So is that for justice, as in like federal, like a judge can communicate with the police or the DA's office better? No, Stephen. It's justice for the end of days. <laughs> is, it, is that going to be what you're going to rest your laurels on? <laughs> I just get increasingly like more. Because the Hasidic the... Jews like to talk to you. <laughs> all right. It's not the end of the world if five percent own still own forty percent. The top twenty percent can't be the end of the world. <laughs> the proletariats. <laughs> yeah. Um. And I, I bet you, Sander. Like, what if this was all really a ruse so that Trump could steal Sanders voters? <laughs> No, he's, he's still in the Yang gang. He's not still in Bernie voters. Uh, you are kind of right. But imagine that. <laughs> was this all? Trump, did Trump actually give those military uh, soldiers that went to that uh, training games in October? Did Trump give it to them so this could start, so he could become like the most amazing president in the whole world? And in the he's <laughs> he's able to orchestrate this in seven D chess and make all these people move in certain ways. Is that what Trump's doing? I mean. The Chinese figured it out first. They put in the first piece of the puzzle that the U.S. military put it in Wuhan. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so that the world would hate them and so that Trump would have a crisis to galvanize his support. This is Trump's 9-11. <laughs> it wow. is. It is. <laughs> I'm a wartime president. I'm a wartime president. It's a war. I mean, uh, he is. In his words, uh, it's the hidden enemy, tougher than one that stands in front of you. The invisible enemy, and isn't that uh that's very nineteen eighty four esque? Oh no, that's a, no, that's not the hidden enemy. You know exactly who the enemy is. You just never see them. Yeah, because you know that you're at war with the East and that they're evil, but you have no idea why. No one remembers. And yeah, that's the dystopian is that it's constant. It's like they're in a military industrial complex that they can't get out of, and they can't stop waging wars in other countries. And taking things over in, in, in the name of democracy. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, – so the stimulus, obviously, because Washington is a perfect example of how quickly elected officials can move. Uh, it's an unfortunate thing. Uh, I heard someone say it very, very well, that it's like a battleship, and you can't just turn a battleship 180 very quickly. You know, first they got to tell the people in the engine room and then the rudder, and then they have to move massive things, and then it takes forever because it's like a mile long. So, I mean, we did it in a week. Even even with people, grandstanders, Trump's words. Grandstanders, Pelosi coming back from yeah, vacation. Even then we did do that. Like, we have this first. And obviously this isn't ratified into law yet. Trump hasn't signed. This isn't a thing yet. But that first step took a week. Okay, so this next ship. If 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 we fall like uh, exponential curve, this next step should take mm -hmm. three days or four days. Should, but it's, should it's getting passed back to Congress, and I've heard murmurs of you know they want Planned Parenthood funding. There are certain oh that's the big thing that was in Pelosi's fourteen hundred page bill that she offered up is massive money to Planned Parenthood, uh, the bringing in of the Green New Deal. Solar subsidies, the uh, uh, yeah, CO two tax credits, um, yeah, like mandatory airline for emission, airlines, the, yeah, <laughs> uh, a ton of other stuff that would have cost a lot other more money or put more 
effort onto the government, onto the economy, in the sake of building uh, America into our vision. Now yeah. that we had the opportunity, can't go have a good crisis go to waste. That is what it is. Uh, that being said, though, it is closer to political suicide to stall this bill too long. Like, if you vote against it, your opponent, or like, not even vote yeah, against it. What if it. you're really old? You're a really old politician who this is their last hurrah. This is the last Hail Mary. At th- oh yeah, then you it, don't care. It's eleven <laughs> seconds on the clock. You're at, you're at your thirty. Yeah. You know, and and you're down exactly six points. And this is, you know, you're down seven points. And it's the only opportunity you got. Yeah, there's and a possibility. Probably, not, probably can't run next election cycle because you're old. Mm-hmm. And people are turning on you because the young bloods in the party are starting to stir up the nest a little bit. Maybe you just pour gasoline on yourself and lo- smoke a cigarette and say yippee ki It's like die on your sword. Dr. Strangelove right there. You sit on the bomb and That's- just wave your hat as you go down. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's possible. I'm not saying it's outside. Or even you could get a weird scenario where, like, an AOC could grandstand, you know, pretty much die for their beliefs, quote-unquote, so they she wouldn't get reelected. And then, because progressives make up such a large portion of millennials, and millennials will start to vote eventually, she eventually. could come back as a senator for New York. Well, and another thing that we've also talked on this podcast is a good chance that AOC is going to be uh, – Redistrict and not be able to run uh, next cycle. Yeah, so, that could be a good one. I mean, that, that's you know, th- there's got to be political scientists that work for the White House. They're just trying to see like what the hell, like who's 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 that? who's what the what are you doing? Who what have you heard? Hey, come here. Hey, c- come here to Ted Cruz. Who you been talking to? What's going on? Hey, Schumer. Hey, come come here. You know, someone's got to be on the, on the gossip in yeah. there. There's got to know. Like, hey, what's the plan? What's the plan? Huh? We got the midnight midnight meeting. Oh, where's that at? Oh, th- 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 what's going on? You know, so some you know, reporter that's you know, you know, House of Cards screwing somebody, and it's you know, working out, getting the deets. Somebody's doing something at all times. So, uh, we'll find that out in the next couple of days. Who decides to not let the most expensive anything ever put into law to ever happen to save the American world? Ever. Find out ever. Yeah. The most expensive thing ever is about to be spent. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Yeah. There's uh, uncharted st- uh, territory pretty much for anybody. So we really don't know. Left, don't- right, center. Yeah, yeah. We, do- we don't know if this really is a pandemic. We don't know if it's just a man-made panic. We don't know if this is an opportunity. We how don't many people know- are going to die? How far is this going to go? How many people are fe- infected? Like, yeah. There's a lot of question marks on every single ticker on the page. Maybe I don't know. Figuring it out. This is why I would hate to be in any higher level. Like I'd be a small level government. Yeah. And I could be like a house representative. It's not that much responsibility. A couple subcommittees. You know, learn the legalese. You know, be like a st- in the city council. But I could never be like a something serious politician. <laughs> I'd be like, ah, oh, f- screw you, screw you. You're fired. Oh, suddenly I'm being indicted. No, I don't care. I'm freaking out. There's too much stuff going on. No. Maybe this is why these guys always have affairs. Just got to blow off steam. I guess. They got a lot of shit going on. You know, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't say DC is the bastion of morality by any stretch of the imagination. (laughs) Uh, That's why Anthony Weiner went to South America. uh, Oh, man. What a (laughs) guy. What an appropriately named man. Uh, Uh, Unbelievable. Um, I guess this, the outcome of this story isn't funny, but I, my prediction for this is that Trump is going to come out great like flying colors and the reason being that he's being attacked mainly on being a racist you know calling it the chinese virus because it's from did, did you China. watch the press conference yeah he's he doubled down on chinese virus no i mean well a reporter specifically asked like about his vocabulary specifically which i was waiting for for the past couple of days and he just says well it is what it is chinese virus and then stops with it so i, I think that somebody did say, like hey just like Fucking like, don't stop. I love my Asian Americans. They're great people. They love this country. Chinese virus. <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> uh, but going it's off more than that, one Asian, Tom. Come on. Yeah. Um, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but going off of that, uh, so he's just being attacked mainly on possibly being a racist, and then 
I can't remember who the story was through, but there was this older couple who took hydroxychloroquine, which is the drug they've been touting as possibly the way to treat um, COVID-19. Oh, yeah. uh, it, it was some smaller, not ABC news agency. Yeah, okay, you, so you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, that, so the so husband in the last, died. <laughs> so in the last couple of days, Trump tweeted that a possible tr- therapeutic treatment, not cure, that was never a word said, mm. is a mixture of two drugs, hydroxychloroquine and erythr- erythromycin, in conjunction proved to have positive effects on the virus. Well, some old couple saw that on fish koi hey, tank. Hey, you're spoiling the hook. It was What was reported was that oh, yeah, they me. went to the hospital. The husband died. The wife was in critical condition. They were just saying, don't believe what he says. You know, we, we did this because we trusted him. But it was fish tank oil. Like, it was fish tank cleaner. <laughs> also... I don't even think that's what they said. I, I'm pretty sure whatever reporter just pulled that out of it and extrapolated like, oh, facts. Trump said this. Mm. A, B, C. Wow. Yeah. So uh, apparently on the list of ingredients for that koi cleaner was hydroxychloroquine. Maybe koi fish get malaria. I don't know. Uh, but uh, PSA, don't drink anything that has a danger sign on it or that has the word cleaner in it. It doesn't even have to have like an MS, you know, MSDS sheet on it. If it says cleaner, don't drink. Put it on surface. Yeah. You put on surface. You don't, don't drink. And on top of that, don't take drugs for COVID-19 when you don't actually have the virus. Like this isn't a prevention measure. It's a treatment measure. After you get it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get, this isn't the vaccine. They definitely would like, it's, it's amazing when people want like, oh, with the exact vocabulary was a and b and when you said that in conjunction that's what it meant and now it's like oh well you could have I- inferred that you know that was implied yeah <sniffs> no well ain't nothing implied but of course trump said drink toilet cleaner drink koi cleaner put that on a shirt <laughs> on the list of shirts we gotta make that's gotta be one drink koi cleaner hands down so yeah that was asked <laughs> and uh, he he's just like nah. When the reporter's asked, that, he's like, I nah, know, I didn't say that. Yeah, it's unfortunate because it's bullshit. It's a trash story. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's all about political suicide nowadays. Yeah, it is. political assassination. Gotcha. Now you gotta. Well, speaking of political assassination, apparently uh, a sexual uh, uh, accuser of Joe Biden has surfaced. Wait, really? Somebody's accusing Joe Biden of Good. sexual assault. We haven't assault. talked about the election in like three episodes. I, 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 is that even going on? They canceled the Tokyo Olympics. Can we just cancel the They've election? Postponed. They'll be in 2021. Uh, 2020's canceled. 2021 has been... Yeah, there you go. Okay, so who is this accuser? Uh, I have no idea. I haven't looked into it at all, at all because unfortunately, uh, it might be a solid portion of some uh, agitator on the right that wants to pull it out, but it's really convenient that somebody... You know, at the tail end of the election cycle for their respective party, that they have a sexual assault allegation against them, which is uh, convenient. Can't you agree? Uh, just a little bit. Yeah, now that the primaries are pretty much over, Sanders doesn't have a shot. Or so they say. He's, yeah, that's, you know, I mean, could he still Bernie is absolutely it? still in the race. Yeah, if he won Ohio, let's say. Yeah, that'd be a shot in the arm. Sexual allegations from from a former staffer. This was written today by Yahoo Lifestyle. Ooh, sponsor that's us. A, a source I can uh, trust. Back in the '90s, inappropriately smelled her hair and kissed the top of her head. Uh well, he does it all the time. Yeah. that's not that's not news. Nah, we've never uh, heard that before. Touched her in her ways, put her hands on her shoulders, and run. His, that's he does that today. That, yeah, he actually felt me up when I met him. Yeah, that's right. Tom, you were raped. I need to come forward. You need to come forward, Tom. Yeah, Sleepy Joe Biden grabbed my bicep. And According then- to Reed, Biden <laughs> pressed her up against the wall and digitally penetrated her without her consent. Wait, what? <laughs> Biden fingered a chick and didn't ask. That's, uh, that's pretty gross. And that's not very nice. And then, uh, huh. Well. Apparently, in her quote, she said, I wanted to be a senator. I didn't want to sleep with one. That's righteous. Well, that's not good for Biden. He's going through a stroke right now, a permanent, like, taking too long <laughs> stroke. And now someone's coming out that saying that 
uh, she was sexually assaulted by him. Uh, this season of Who Becomes the President is becoming exciting by the day. And when we get back to it, it seems to be uh, on a hiatus thanks to COVID-19. Yeah, but uh, apparently the, the fun hasn't stopped in good old election land. Oh, no, they'll pick it up right where they left off as soon as this is all over. Yeah, once we start working, it's going to be immediately. So Joe Biden, I don't even know if he's going through a stroke. He's just going through the motions. I think, no, I think, I think as being the, I, at one time, educated as an EMT and having a nursing family, he has Alzheimer's, bro. He is going through being medically, the term is called old. And it's terrifying that he's going to be the other half of the entire nation's vote who becomes the head honcho. That guy. That's going to be the guy? Oh my gosh, that's going to be terrifying. Sleepy Joe Biden. He might actually fall asleep during a debate. I don't even know. Yeah, uh, he looks good against Sanders, but yeah, we're very speculative if there was PEDs he, involved. He railed a fat rail of cocaine for that because he was on fire for the first and only time I've ever seen him in my life be on fire. That's it. He, he, he went to Panama, got stem cells, got every yeah, single something. genokine, all the goods, and it wore off in a yeah, week. Because uh, I watched a little bit of his 2012 debate with Paul Ryan, and he looked good, but yeah, that was – pre-Alzheimer's. It was also eight years ago. Yeah. Eight years ago, we were both children compared to who we are now. Yeah, that's fair. And now he has become, uh, you a, know... A houseplant? Uh, the old man from Family Guy. Yeah. Uh, wait, Herbert the Pervert? Yeah! <laughs> mm, I like that. Was good. That was a good... Uh, I like that little connection right there. That was good. I got some electric hey, stuff in the <laughs> uh, Don't Jeez. see what's Fox. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so that's what's going on yeah. for the 26th of the March. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, definitely, hopefully by the next time we record uh, this coming Monday, the bill will have passed and we can actually cover the hard numbers. What we just gave out are rough estimates. Very preliminary reports. Yeah, and you never, they're about to play tennis with a democratically dominated House and a Republican dominated Senate. <sighs> Politics, don't you just love it? Uh, yeah, especially when people are uh, waiting on their living. It's great. Maybe Xi Jinping was right. Just take over the economy. Just do what you want. Dude, he's the man. <laughs> he's the man. Uh, that's it for episode 11. Find us on Facebook, Demagogue News, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere you find podcasts. Yeah, CastBox, what have you. Yeah, stay healthy out there. Stay healthy.